Yes, so thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for the invitation. I've been to the Max Planck, the University of Bonn. It's the first time I'm at the Ausdorf Center. Um, OK, so first of all, uh, everything I'm going to say before I forget is joint work with uh, Eyal Goren from McGill University, Ben Howard, and uh, Kirti Marapusipera from Harvard. In fact, we discovered that the two teams were working on the same uh, uh, topic, so we sort of joined forces. Uh, so you have seen in the previous talk uh, uh, already appearing uh, Shimura varieties of orthogonal type. Uh, actually, I should put some quotation mark in the sense that it will, they will be associated, as in the previous talk, to G-spin better than the orthogonal group for reasons that we have already seen. Um, but um, so my talk will be, instead of being local at P, as the previous one, it will be more global. And in fact, the brunier yang conjecture is, uh, is, a, is a statement about uh, the computing pulping side of something on, on, those, uh, on those Shimura varieties. And um, the thing that I want to, to convince you about is that uh, despite being ugly in the sense they are not uh, Pell-type Shimura varieties in general for large N, they are very nice because they have a very rich structure of uh, of sub-varieties and cycles and so on. So they have a very rich uh, nature in that sense, which make it, for example, better be behave from that point of view than uh, Ziegler modular varieties. OK, so let me recall the notation briefly. And since it will be a more global talk, it will be probably slightly different from what we have seen. So here I take uh, L, L lattice and Q a quadratic form. on L, which we assume to be of signature N2. And uh, sometimes uh, there will be uh, the bilinear form appearing associated to Q. So why not introducing it? OK. And uh, uh, I will assume. So in the previous talk, since we were interested in local models at the prime p, we were assuming that our lattice localized at p was, uh, was perfect. It, has, it was really isomorphic to its dual uh, via this bilinear form. Here we have a sort of a more global aspect that we want to consider. So the Shimura varieties will be over ring of integers of number field more than uh, complete local rings. Readable? Uh, so what I will assume is that uh, L and Q is maximal. In the sense that I cannot extend it uh, to a larger lattice inside the, the Q span of it, such that Q is still integrally defined. Okay? And this will be used uh, because thanks to work of, of Kirti, here's where his expertise came in, we will know something about uh, the theory of local models and regular models of such uh, Shimura varieties. OK, so sorry about this, but I have to use the blackboard. So CL will be the Clifford algebra associated to L and Q. So it will just be the tensor algebra modulo the two-sided ideal generated by things of this type. And this we know that since this ideal uh, is uh, generated by even, even things, it will decompose into an even and odd part. And then, as we've seen in the previous talk, associated with this, we can consider uh, a group which I call G-spin. G, which is G spin of L. Uh, and the property is that uh, the R valued points, so R is an algebra, are just uh, 
the units of that, uh, uh, the even part of the Clipper algebra uh, over R, um, with the property that if you act by conjugation on C of L, it sends L to itself. And uh, uh, as we have seen uh, before, this is a central extension uh, and uh, this conjugation, in fact, is what this map is about, okay? So an element of V will act uh, as an orthogonal transformation of, of of L tensor R. Okay, and we'll very often just write V for L tensor Q. And as we have seen before, there is an associated Schumer uh, variety over C. So we have, uh, uh, so unfortunately, my notation is slightly different. So X is, for me, the symmetric space instead of D. Sorry about that. Symmetric space, which has two possible interpretations. If you want to view it as the real points of G spin modular maximal compact uh, group of real points, uh, for example, we can view it by uh, taking P inside L tensor R, where P is an oriented negative definite plane inside L tensor R, so the maximum possible. But we also have uh, the complex uh, interpretation, which uh, gives it uh, a complex structure, as we've seen before. So these are the elements uh, Z inside L tensor C with the property that Z is isotropic. And if you pair Z with its complex conjugate, this is a negative definite modulo units. And the way you go from one to the other is that if you take uh, any such thing, the real part and the imaginary part span this oriented negative plane and vice versa. You can also go, go back. Take an oriented plane, you take uh, an orthogonal or an orthonormal basis, and that element plus i, the other element of the basis, will give you element z of this type up to, up to scalar. Okay? Okay, and I will denote by mc. The, um, the variety, which is defined by taking the adelic points, modular compact open subgroup, modular di diagonal action of GQ, where K is uh, a compact open GAF. And in fact, I want that it act, it's contained in. Uh, the units, and there's, there's some other condition which I don't want to, to write. Uh, so that it really defines, so this, this, K really, this K really, really matters, okay? So for example, I want that it acts trivially on uh, the discriminant group of L dual modulo L. Okay, so it's very important in order to have uh, sort of good reduction properties of that variety when we'll find uh, an integral model, okay? But I don't want to get into too much into the definition, especially if that group for is not at places where this group is known, is known free. Okay, anyway, I have a very specific, uh, sp very specific variety, and then this has a, 
as a canonical model m, which is over q if my little n there is Vigo equal to 1 and it's an imaginary quadratic field In fact, we know what it is. It's a C plus of D if n is equal to 0. So there is a slight difference in the two, in the behavior of that variety. <coughs> and uh, as we've seen before in the, in the, the, the previous talk this morning, uh, the advantage of working uh, with this group G which is apparently more complicated than the orthogonal group, is that we can embed it into some uh, Ziegler modular variety, okay, which will help us to define uh, integral models. Okay? So the advantage of G on SOLQ is the Kugas attack. embedding which at a level of uh, maybe use this one of algebraic groups means that I embed my G inside some symplectic group level of groups so here we have a, a symplectic uh, pairing which I'm not going to, to describe which realizes G as a subgroup and at a level of varieties neglecting uh, problems coming from the level uh, the level k we get an embedding of m or a map at least to some moduli of polarized is the polarization abelian varieties endowed with the right action up to isogeny of the Clifford algebra of V. Okay, and uh, there is a constraint about uh, Rosati involution, which is not exactly the uh, canonical involution in CD, because that comes into the choice of delta and so on, but let me neglect it. Okay, there's also some uh, interaction between the polarization and possible involutions on, on CV. Okay, and uh, the, the, the good thing is that if you work over the complex numbers and you take uh, a modular point in it, uh, since uh, everything is constructed uh, from this uh, spin, the homology of that abelian variety is identified as a right CV module with CV. So it's principal. Okay, and uh, the the thing that characterizes this map, or the image of this map at least uh, over the complex numbers, is that uh, even if you don't have a Pell type interpretation, we still have a wonderful property which I'm going to describe, because that will be used uh, later on.
so you see that you, you can embed, uh, so remember that we've seen this morning that C spin, so how, how is this realized? So C spin acts on W, which is CV by left multiplication, which commutes with the right multiplication by CV. So we have, if you restrict, uh, well, similarly we have a, a, a map from uh, the homomorphism as right CV modules from CV to CV, which is left multiplication. And the image of this map is exactly the locus where uh, uh, the image of L is a sub hodge structure. Right? So for every x, we said we can identify, uh, say, the homology with the CV. So in particular, th that becomes a Q hot structure, OK, with its weight uh, filtration over C. So in particular, also the homes are in inherits, uh, uh, inherits a hot structure. And we want that uh, the image of V is a sub-hodge, is a sub-hodge uh, sub -hodge structure, OK? And in that case, for those points, the Manfort A group Q, which you want, is exactly contained in, in G. Okay? Okay. And in particular, it is since uh, the homes of a hot structure of type uh, minus one, one, one minus one uh, is, a, is a hot structure of, of weight zero, it's of weight zero. which is a bit uh, odd if you think about K3 surfaces. Well, that is the homology, the second homology of uh, a surface, so it should have weight two. But instead, it's very good for what we're going to do next, because uh, things of weight zero inside a home are really related to endomorphisms, OK? And so that will actually, that, that is what will save us at the end of the day when we want to compute things for objects which do not have a modular interpretation as those that variety MC, but it's somehow related to, to some modular interpretation in the sense that we will uh, consider uh, endomorphisms. Okay, so uh, this is just to tell you that, so we have seen this morning that we can pull back the universal abelian variety over MC, and this is the wonderful extra property that we want. And the theory of local models, the richness of the theory of local models, tells us that actually this structure extends over Z in a very strong sense. And this is what we are going to use. OK. So the result is that so the, the, the theorem follows from results of Vazu and Kissing <coughs> and Madabusipera. admits uh, an integral regular model over, well, z1 over 2 uh, if n is bigger equal to 1, or the ring of integers of C plus V, which is both of our quadratic field 
Niech będzie kot niedzielą. Ok? So, for primes which do not divide the discriminant group LU modulo L, this really follows from work of Vajin and Kizzy. And that, variety, that uh, scheme will have good reduction in that case. OK? Instead, for primes which uh, divide LU modulo L, the construction is due, is due to Manafusi Pera. OK? And in that case, you can prove that, in fact, the reduction, certainly in this case, is, is definitely singular. OK? And uh, OK? And uh, the extra properties, so that it, it admits an integral regular model uh, uh, over that sort of open of the ring of integers, such that this wonderful property here for hot structure V extends to, you could say, a motive over M. And of course, we don't know what a motive is, but at least we know that it has several realizations. Okay? So, for example, we have a, a Durand realization. with a RAM, which of the complex numbers is the module with connection associated to that local system V, OK? Uh, and, but you also have a, a tal realizations, Peladic, if you invert L. And if you have crystalline realizations, FP. So maybe I'll just denote it by OK. Uh, OK, so for example, so thi this will be, uh, we, this will have also a Hodge filtration. Uh, of weight zero and, for example, uh, F1 of it is a line bundle called the topological. Which is very concrete because over C, remember that we had our uh, Symmetric space V. Which was the set of points in L tensor C satisfying certain properties. And then the fiber of it is just the span of it. Okay? As simple as that. But I will play some uh, some some role, so I prefer to to have its uh, its definition here on the blackboard. Okay, so this is really the the, the strength of the of the theory of local models as we uh, get it from the works which I've mentioned there. Okay, so uh, as we said this, uh, as we as we saw uh, this morning, uh, so there is a drawback uh, of working with those varieties that uh, even if we have those regular integral models, we have such extra structures that are not very easy to work with because there is no modular interpretation. 
Okay, so for example, if you want to study deformation problems and so on, you can you don't know where to put your hands. So problem that for large n uh, m or its uh, model m do not have modular interpretation. as a path type modular problem. But there is an interesting feature. So that's the sort of the, the drawback, the disadvantage of working with such, uh, with such things. But there is a very interesting and rich theory of cycles, okay? And that's why uh, people starting with the uh, Borchets, I guess, uh, got very interested in those, in, those, in those varieties, okay? Why? Well, because if you take uh, L0 inside L, uh, a maximal lattice with respect to Q, so you restrict Q to L0, and you suppose it's maximal with such restriction uh, of signature M2, okay, for any M in between 0 and N minus 1, okay, you get a diff you get a, a Uh, a natural map or morphism of algebraic groups and of Shimura varieties and of their integral models. So you get a, a, a very a large supply of, of sub-varieties, even of sub-schemes of M. And uh, notice, as we saw this morning, that the relative dimension of M0 is M, and relative dimension of M is N. So for, for M equals 0 down to, down to Z. 1 over 2, say. So for m equals 0, you get uh, on the generic fiber points, okay? So arithmetic surfaces inside, inside those m's, okay? You get, uh, we'll see, zero-dimensional cycle. Zero-dimensional relative to to Z1 over 2. And for example, instead for M equal to N minus 1, we get divisors. OK? And in a la in large, in large supply. OK, so what is the uh, origin of the, of the conjecture by Brunier Yang? Well, uh, it is the following. So, uh, first of all, Brunier uh, and Yang, uh, based on works of uh, Borchert, Brunier, uh, Brunier Funke, and so on, uh, are able to endow uh, divisors of this type, which are called Higner divisors. Maybe you have to sum up several, several things, but essentially, they have Higner divisors. They are able to endow them uh, with a, <coughs> a green function at infinity, making them into 
uh, arithmetic divisors, okay? And their conjecture was a very precise form of what should be the arithmetic degree of the pullback of such things once endowed with the structure of another. Yes? Uh, sorry, so, so this, um, you have m0 going to m. Yes. And there's a Kubik size construction as well. Yes. Is that compatible? Uh, yes. In fact, I will come back to that. And it will be, it will be important. Yes. Yes. Well, maybe uh, why not giving an example since the, the question arose? Well, certainly if you forget the, the polarization, so compatibility. For example, let's take the case m equal to 0. Okay? And then m0 is a moduli of a CM elliptic curve uh, for the field C plus L0 tensor Q, okay, with extra structure which I'm going to forget. <coughs> M is uh, uh, endowed, so M, so there's such a map. Here we, we have uh, the universal Kugas Atake uh, abelian variety. Okay, over M0, uh, well, if we forget for one second the uh, problem of representability, we have. Uh, uh, a universal uh, elliptic curve, and uh, on M0, okay, on the pullback on M0, the compatibility between this uh, universal abelian uh, variety constructed by the Google Satake embedding and E is simply that, uh, so over M0, it is simply you take your elliptic curve that will have a right C plus L0 action. And you further base change to L. OK? So it, the dimensions add up correctly. And it, in general, it's always the same, the same construction. Okay? So you have C of L0 inside CL, and by some Serre's tensor construction, well, you have to be a little bit careful in the sense that it's not a maximal order. Let me forget about this, but essentially the construction is obtained this way. You got a lower dimensional one, and you base change by this tensor construction to CL. Okay? So that answers your question. Okay. Uh, so I hope you got it. I, to, I need the, the rest of the backward. So uh, arithmetic divisors on M. This is based on work of Borchert, Brunier, Funke, Brunier, Funke. I hope I mentioned everyone. Okay, uh, so the, 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 the so you, you want to endow things that we understand more or less rather well from the point of view of scheme theory and the construction of the scene with an extra structure which is a green function. Okay, and this is uh, done as follows. So. Mm, 
one takes a space so let me write things precisely and then maybe hand wave to the meaning on the wind meaning of every word okay so we start with a with a space so for harmonic weak mass forms. So these are uh, functions on the Poincaré-Hart space, which are harmonic and they have a, a sort of a, the decay at infinity in a in a good in a good way and satisfies extra properties which I don't want don't want to mention of that weight, and they are vector valued. Okay. in the uh, C algebra of uh, functions from LG module L to C. If that is trivial, you can, you can forget about it. And uh, they are vector valued, and they transform under the action of a suitable group, in a cover of SL2Z, the metaplectic group, under the conjugate of the value representation. Okay? So it's a formula that tells you how they should behave if you <coughs> act by essentially SL2Z, which acts on here by the Bell representation passing to the metaplectic group. But you can just forget about it. We representation conjugate to the Bell representation. And finally, this Z here stands for with integral <coughs> principal property. Okay, this also let me just uh, ignore for one for one second. Okay, so there's a very complicated space of functions, and uh, from that space we have two arrows. I need to somehow at least mention if I want to give a precise meaning to the conjecture. That that's why I'm getting into this. So I have two arrows. So one arrow is goes into uh, our kind of divisors. On M. Uh, sorry for those uh, lying behind. Okay, uh, so that means really that to an F, I can associate uh, a subscheme of codimension, or well, not a subscheme, but at least uh, something which is of codimension one, whose image is codimension one in, in M, plus a green function, and a green function is defined using uh, uh, the regular regular li regularized. Uh, integral and lifts of, of Borchardt's and further generalizations due to Q, essentially Brunier and uh, uh, Brunier and, and Yang. Okay, so that's, uh, there's a procedure uh, using essentially Borchardt's uh, lift uh, theory to produce uh, green functions. So they will, those will be functions, uh, real functions on uh, M MC which are smooth away from the support of Z half, and they have a certain logarithmic uh, uh, singularities on the support of Z of F. And on the other hand, there is a, um, uh, so this is a, an operator, which is due to Brunier and Funke, which go to uh, cusp forms. So maybe there is no space. Let me change blackboard. Okay, so sorry about this. Keep patient. And in the next half of the blackboard, I'll try to make at least this part more concrete.
So there's a, so we can go from such uh, complicated functions to the more uh, uh, sort of better understood uh, space of cusp forms. Again, they are vector valued. Of that weight, one plus n over two, and it's valued in the same set with the transforming according to the uh, the value representation. Okay, so these are the two these are the two ingredients. Okay. Uh, so which I want to keep on the blackboard. And the basic example we want to consider so the image of that vertical map, so the Arachel of spent obtaining this way are spent by by divisors of this type z m u phi m u so I don't want to say anything about this phi m u simply because already the definition of the phi of f you know, is uh, pretty pretty involved but I want to say something about those, those divisors so, so that you get a feeling, a feeling for it. Okay. Where? Or I should say, uh, where m and mu vary. So m is a positive rational number, and mu is a class in a dual model. Okay? And this z and mu naturally leaps over my big M. And I will describe for you on S value points. So these are the elements which are pairs X and F with the property that X lies in M of S. And the Kuga Satake and sorry, F. is a rational endomorphism where AX is the associated Kuga Satake Abelian variety or Bitten scheme such that well I need, I need those two conditions okay so f squared is equal to multiplication by m. That's condition one. Okay. And the second thing is that you see whenever you have an endomorphism from a x, you have taking uh, Duram or etal or crystalline realizations in a x. Okay. The etal Duram crystalline realizations of uh, F they lie in our wonderful in our remote heat 
So we have our multi V and we have uh, our dual. So let me just assume for simplicity maybe of exposition that I will give you the definition from mu equal to zero, okay? Okay, so remember that we have our motive, uh, which uh, is really uh, lives inside the nomorphism of the Durham uh, homology of the X or the crystalline homology or the etal homology. You have the, re the realization of F and you want an incidence. You want that the realization of F lies in that subspace. Okay? Okay. So the motive V itself is rather uh, complicated if you're not over the complex numbers, but the condition that we have written here are more reasonable because they have to do with the endomorphism of abelian varieties. So for example, if you want to discuss the formation theory, okay, they are easier to, to deal with. So what does the conjecture of Rounier and Yang say? So you start with the, your preferred L0 in L uh, of L0 maximum of signature. 0, 2, so we get our map from M0 to M. And we start with our preferred function. To which we can associate our Arakelov divisor. And the, the conjecture has to do with the uh, pulling back that Arakelov divisor to M0 and compute its satisfied degree and express it in terms of other uh, functions or other, other values. Okay, so this is what we want to, what we want to express. And we're going to express it into two ways, okay? <coughs> the first way, well, we have, um, we have uh, uh, an error term, so a term involving the arithmetic degree. of the quote autological line bundle. Okay. So we have a term, so a constant, so this is a constant times the degree. that quotatological line bundle, where, so remember that we defined before that line bundle, and we call it the, the tautological one. Well, T is simply the dual of it, and there is a sort of a Peterson metric. I don't want to discuss. And this we want to express in two ways. Uh, 
the first one is a constant which does depends on m0. And essentially, the multiplicity, the sum over the inverses of the, I mean, it counts with multiplicity the points of our CM, CM cycle, okay? And then there is a derivative of uh, a ranking Selberg convolution L function between uh, uh, so we solve our F and we associate via this map of Bernier and Funke uh, um, a cusp form then we have a theta function of the complement so these are negative definite plane inside uh, inside v we take the orthogonal we get something positive definite and we get take the theta function the representation number of elements in this positive definite uh, lattice and we take the derivative of such a thing and we compute its value at zero. Okay? Very nice thing because uh, that should remind you, for example, of formulas like gross Okay? In fact, as a main example of uh, the results, uh, Brunier and Yang uh, reobtain <coughs> distributed the results of uh, gross in this in this way. And then uh, second, and uh, uh, this is uh, actually a theorem of Brunier Yang. We want to, we can express such thing as uh, the sum over the C points of M0 of the values of our uh, green function weighted by the automorphism group of y plus some explicit terms where I don't want to get into because I think I already killed you with all this and you know there's some incoherent ideas and series appearing better not to, to get into it. Okay. So what this should suggest is that to prove uh, the theorem one, uh, the right way to go is just to prove, uh, use the result of Brunier and Yang, so the quality is here, okay, between these two terms. is since we have this to prove directly the quality of this uh, height uh, right this uh, arithmetic degree uh, of this uh, uh, the pullback of this arithmetic divider to m0 in terms of uh, this sum okay and this seems uh, very plausible in the sense that uh, suppose that you all your points y uh, appearing here do not lie on the support of this divisor, okay? Then uh, this sum is exactly the contribution which uh, you get to the arithmetic degree at infinity, okay? And then you would expect that this explicit sum is related to uh, the uh, finite place contribution of this arithmetic degree, okay? And in fact, this explicit uh, sum uh, so this uh, is sort of uh, can be expressed implicitly using some incoherent addition series, but in fact Schoffer really computed uh, what it should be, and uh, it seems. I mean, if you if you look at the formulas, it's very striking that what is uh, involved 
is uh, counting uh, special endomorphism of abelian variety of uh, elliptic curves. At least that's what enters in part of this explicit sum. Okay, so this is very suggestive and promising. But there is one uh, uh, problem, and the problem is that. Uh, it's not at all true, and in fact is uh, almost uh, always wrong, the fact that all these points do not lie on the support of that function. Okay? And in fact, in the conjecture that Brunier Yang give, so the quality of these three quantities, uh, the expression of those functions for the points which lie on the support of z of f is very mysterious, right? Because your function phi f is supposed to be smooth outside z of f. So this supposedly doesn't even have a meaning, OK? While instead, uh, one of the key observations of uh, Schoffer first and then of Brunier Yang is that if you uh, compute the regularized uh, theta integral uh, of, of Borchert's, even for points lying on the support, the quantity itself makes sense, OK? You don't have any C infinity behavior, so your function is not smooth because it can't on the boundary, but those values make sense, OK? So actually, let me just make two, two remarks. And then I'll stop. So, so, so to prove the qualities, we need to compute the contribution. of a proper intersection, right? So you will have points which do not lie on the support of that functions. And that we can do, OK? And in fact, this, uh, since we have seen before in the example they gave about the compatibility of the Kuga Satake uh, variety, right? If you take m in m0, uh, well, point, say, m0. So we said a of y is an elliptic curve tensor c plus l0 c of l. And then you would expect that the special endomorphism that we are looking out of the type, a special endomorphism coming from that lambda, right, which is the intersection of l with l0 orthogonal which will act on the right hand side. And then you have a true special endomorphism of your elliptic curve. OK? And that why, uh, that's why in the formulas you have will, you, will appear representation numbers of element of lambda contributing to the right hand side. And the left hand side, instead, has to do with uh, computing uh, special endomorphism of elliptic curves and how much they lift uh, <coughs> modulo of powers of p which is exactly what uh, uh, Schoffer essentially computed and will sort of contribute to some of these explicit, uh, some elements of this explicit sum, OK? So here we reduce <coughs> to the case of elliptic curves and special endomorphism of elliptic curves. And here we are happy because we know, OK? How to do, OK? We have all this theory of economical, quasi-economical lifting, and so on. The challenging thing is to compute the improper intersection. Which will explain uh, the rest of the terms, and also the mysterious terms appearing in the Brunier-Yang formula, which should not be there, OK? The values of the functions where the functions should not be defined. 
OK, uh, so this uh, you can sort of, from an abstract point of view, you can uh, look up in uh, Julien Soule and you say, OK, I apply a moving lemma and I compute intersection that way. It will, not, it will not work, right? Because you want really an explicit way of computing things. Uh, luckily, there is a, uh, a thesis available, which never appeared as a paper of a student of Gillet. Uh, his name uh, is Hu, who computed, uh, sort of gave a meaning uh, to improper intersection in Arkell of theory in the case uh, using uh, the theory of, if you want the algebraic setting, using uh, the theory of the normal cone. Okay? Ex that's exactly what, uh, what it did. And uh, of deformation to the normal cone in our kind of geometry. <coughs> and the amazing thing is that if you sit down and you do the access <coughs> and you do the exercise, okay, um, that will really account for the missing terms, which are not explained, and also for the mysterious terms, which are there, but should, shouldn't. Okay. Uh, so I plan to say something more about this computation, but I see them uh, over time. So I'll, I'll stop here just as an advertisement for whose theory, and they hope that at some point it will appear uh, as, a, as a paper. And, uh, well, sorry for, I guess, killing you with all this notation, and, well, I stop. Thanks. Except for, so there was the always this standing assumption that I'm working ov over z1 over 2. Mm -hmm. So the conjecture will be proven up to log log, log 2. Okay. <coughs> but otherwise, yes, we have uh, all the terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and it's not Yes, because, because, because in, in this case, uh, you're really dealing with uh, the divisors and, and points. So you can as uh, Ben is suggesting, get away with a sort of a direct uh, computation of, of pulling back metrized line bundles in, instead of, of divisors. Uh, but I think this sort of, uh, at least to me, to my taste, explains things why uh, the, the conjecture should be, should be true. Ben, uh, then about this uh, explanation to a normal form, so you are using a second version and a version which uh, that takes into account no, so the, the, the infinity part we didn't consider at all, in the sense that we didn't consider the, so how the, for example, the green function should be extended in infinity. But so here, this should really meant, should, should be sort of uh, interpreted as following. You have a map from M0 to M, which avoids your, uh, your um, the boundary, okay? Just pull back the, the line bundle that you get. Never. So that's how we, you should really interpret precisely this term. So it's not, as you say, a uh, problem of intersection theory in Arakel of geometry in the sense that we don't have the boundary, okay? But still, that's how you should interpret it and then it's sort of a precise uh, statement. <coughs> and uh, Stecky, yes, I mean, that's something I, I cheated a lot uh, almost everywhere. In the sense that, for example, those ZMU, it's not true they define divisors. Okay, if you look at it, I mean, the map is finite and unramified, but it's not a closed immersion, and yeah, so, yeah, you have to, to, to work with the with stacks, that's true. I mean, that's also why things will be started here in the denominator, yes. Yes? Say, say, I didn't uh, get. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so, see, 
simply, yeah, so you have, you have points lying on the divisor. And do you want to compute the, the so to, on that divisor, you also have a green function. You want to pull it back to the point, and you want to get what the degree is. And you want a way to compute it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Um, yes. Yes, but I think that um, uh, so the, the end result, and I think this uh, also follows from whose theory. Uh, is invariant under uh, rational equivalence. It's true that I'm working with the specific representatives, but uh, his theory, I mean, here's the, always the problem that we don't have infinity, so it's not even clear what it means up to rational equivalence. But maybe I didn't get your questions. Maybe we can discuss 